We've been at the UCI Gravel World Championships where the best road riders clash with gravel pros alongside a smattering of Instagram influencers to boot. They all bring their best gravel bikes with some very interesting component choices and modifications, which is exactly what we're gonna look at today. We've got new and unreleased bikes, car park aero hacks, gearing that will make your knees ache, and what we have to assume is the fastest setup of tyres available. Let's dive in. But before I do, if you like this type of video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. We'll start with the winners of the men's and women's races. Both riders were on new and one unreleased bike. Women's winner Cassia Niwadoma of Canyon SRAM rode the Canyon Grail. This was first spotted at Unbound and has made regular appearances at headline gravel events. It would have been nice to watch the women's race live. Here's hoping the UCI tries a bit harder next year. Men's winner Mathieu Mohoric rode a new Merida Silex, a bike that we hadn't actually seen until this race. The new Silex has a redesigned fork, more tyre clearance and a completely redesigned frame shape. Third placed in the men's race, Connor Swift also found himself on a brand new bike, Pinarello's Dogma X Endurance Road Bike. It's almost a shame to see Swift set up with the latest 12-speed Dura Ace. His previous Pinarello Gravel F was built with bits from his spare parts bin, including a pair of the lesser spotted R785 shifters from 2013. The dry, rocky course funneled riders into a fairly narrow section of tyre choices. 40mm wide, file tread tyres, sometimes with a slick centre, were the order of the day. The specialised Pathfinder and different variants of Schwalbe's G1 platform were by far the most popular. Actually, the Pathfinder has gained such popularity that it's often used as an off-sponsored choice by many riders. Men's under-23 winner and BMC-sponsored athlete Andy Liddick was running them, along with, well, half of Alejandro Valverde. Valverde's bike was running a specialised Pathfinder up front and a Pirelli Cinturato out back, almost certainly what the bike shop local to Valverde carries, rather than a conscious or sponsor correct choice. On the road, World Tour riders' bikes are maintained, wheeled out shiny and fresh for race days, with separate training bikes staying at home. The gravel scene isn't yet receiving that kind of attention or support from the World Tour teams meaning maintenance is often left up to the riders with little time to make changes before the start line. Mahoric's teammate, even Garcia Cortina, was on the Sponsor Correct Continental Terra Speeds in the tougher casing with the e-bike approved protection variant. I have to say that's an interesting contrast to Mahoric's standard Terra Speed. What tyre setup would you run in a race like this? Let me know in the comments below. The aero gravel debate may rumble on, but many riders attempted to make their number boards ever so slightly more aero, a scene you wouldn't find anywhere outside of a gravel race. In the women's race, Canyon riders wrapped their numbers around the head tube, whereas SD Works went for a more traditional approach of attaching it to the bars. Given Niwadoma finished with enough time to walk across the line and lift her bike above her head, we can only assume that the number placement could have been a deciding factor in the race result. For the men's race, the trimming and preening stepped up a notch, with electrical tape filling the gaps left by zip ties alone. You think that's aero though? Hold that gravelly beer. Rain Rata has to be one of our favourite riders right now. The American raced aboard this custom painted giant revolt by Chris Bullock. As with his previous wild bike, which we featured before, this sports his signature super narrow bars. In this case, he's using Works track bars, which are 23 centimeters wide at the tops and 33 centimeters in the drops. This is paired with a 130 millimeter stem. Now, Rain says that he would have preferred a 200 millimeter long stem. I know that's bonkers, but he ran out of time trying to find one. Now finally, his preferred perch is an unusual 100 gram saddle 
handmade by Dash in Colorado, has two narrow and long wings joined with a carbon beam at the rear. It's really cool. Punctures are an unavoidable part of gravel racing. Forcing skinny tyres across mountain bike terrain at road bike speeds means that punctures are ever present, perhaps more so than in any other discipline. This, combined with the lack of team cars on course, meant riders had to get inventive, with all manners of puncture repair hacks on show at the weekend. Most popular was the taped on CO2 canister or all-in-one foam and air solutions, stuck on with whatever tape happened to be on hand or occasionally a Velcro strap. For those intent on plugging their tyres, Dynaplug was the brand of choice, adorning the top tubes of both Mattia DeMarchi's bike and even Garcia Cortina's. Similar whatever is a hand taping applied to stem notes, with the exception of Cameron Mason's very neat colour-coded stem notes, so detailed they'd only fit on the top tube. Others featured sellotape, masking tape, medical tape, and for an extra sleek look, Freddy Ovet's electrical tape and chalk pen, well, it's hard to beat. A big part of any race is the gearing choice, and for 2023, it fell into mainly three categories. We had two by road group sets, one by gravel group sets, and one by mullet setups. Now, traditionally, the mullet setup has been reserved for riders looking for better climbing gears to tackle ultra endurance races such as the Tour Divide or the Silk Road Mountain Race. They've rarely been seen in top tier gravel races. Riders were seen pairing big chain rings with mountain bike cassettes, providing a one by setup with adequate climbing gears and huge top speeds for a small sacrifice in choice of cadence. The top spots of the podium were spread along these categories too, with Niwadoma running a one by ring with a 10 to 52 tooth mountain bike rear cassette and mech, as did Tiffany Cromwell. Men's second place Florian Vermish of Lotto Destiny rode a one by Shimano GRX setup. Mohoric and Connor Swift, meanwhile, both ran road group sets with compact and semi compact crank sets, respectively. There was also a smattering of oval chainrings. Ribble Collective's Mathieven Bond prefers them for smooth power delivery. Rain Ruata, meanwhile, well, he prefers them as he reckons they help his quark power meter numbers <laughs> read slightly higher. The ultimate in race morale boosting right there. Now I can almost feel the anger of our very own Simon von Bromley, who disagrees with that on pretty much every level. While the jury appears to be out on gear combinations and round versus oval rings, most racers have settled on three bolt cleat road pedals as the go-to system for this dry and dusty type of gravel race. Valverde's two bolt look mountain bike pedals with a cage was a noticeable exception to the rule. So if you want to win the gravel worlds, you just need to put a road group set on a gravel frame fit road pedals and find your slickest 40mm tyres. It'll also help to have the legs of a world tour road racer. Before you go and look for those though, I'd like to know which of those component choices you'd use on your gravel bike. Let me know down below. Now if you like pro road tech, then why not check out our video from Paris Roubaix. It was a corker. And remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.